Rosa Louise McCauley was born February 4, 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. She was raised by her mother and grandparents along with her little brother Sylvester. She continued on through life becoming a seamstress and later on marrying Raymond Parks in 1943, finally becoming Rosa Parks. On the fateful day of December 1, 1955, Parks boarded the Montgomery City bus to return home from her day working as a seamstress. Little did she know the repercussions and changes that her next actions would bring. The bus was almost filled up when a white man boarded it. Rosa happened to be sitting in the row right behind the white designated seats, so as protocol directed, the bus driver told her, as well as the other black passengers sitting in that row, to give up their seats for the white man. Rosa refused to do so and as a result was arrested for violating the Jim Crow laws. I was going to stand, I told him I was not, and he told me he would have me arrested. I told him he may do that. This was the spark that set off the Montgomery bus boycott. The Montgomery bus boycott was the single most important event in the civil rights movement because it created a leader for the movement, it was incredibly most productive and triumphant, and motivated Americans to help with civil rights. If Rosa Parks was the spark that started the Montgomery bus boycott, then the boycott was a flame that had set off the explosion that is the civil rights movement. Coming only after the case of Brown versus the Board of Education, according to Stanford, the Montgomery bus boycott began in 1955 on the 5th of December with around 90% of the black citizens in Montgomery staying off the buses. The boycott then went on to last another 13 months. Let me ask this question, uh, what do colored people now hope to gain by pressing the segregation fight at this time? What immediate uh, results do you hope to achieve? But well, we hope to achieve equal rights as any human being to say That's what we are working for. What do you think the prospects are for achieving that goal? I think we'll be successful if we continue. How long do you think it would take? I have no idea how long. Many people know the notable story of how Rosa Parks refused to move from her seat. Many people do not know that the greatest thing to ever happen to the civil rights movement was a product of Rosa's quiet justice. The movement needed a leader and the boycott gave them one, Martin Luther King Jr. With his church as the perfect setting for revolution, Martin Luther King Jr. was the key component that made the boycott and civil rights movement as a whole utterly successful. The group in charge of the boycott was called the Montgomery Improvement Association, or MIA for short. Martin Luther King Jr. was elected leader of this group. The MIA continued the boycott and eventually issued a list of demands for the bus company officials and city commissioners. They asked for courteous treatment by bus operators, first come first serve seating for all, with black seating from the rear and whites from the front, and black bus operators on predominantly black routes. These demands were not met, and as a result, the boycott continued. Taxi drivers started to offer boycotters transportation since they weren't taking buses, but this led to the city penalizing black taxi drivers for aiding the boycotters. In response to the penalizations, the MIA, under the direction of Martin Luther King Jr., organized a carpool. Following the advice of T.J. Jemson, who had organized a carpool during a 1953 bus boycott in Baton Rouge, the MIA developed an intricate carpool system of about 300 cars. But after this, in February of 1956, city officials obtained injunctions against the boycott and indicted over 80 boycott leaders under a 1921 law prohibiting conspiracies that interfered with lawful business. This included Martin Luther King Jr., who was tried and subsequently convicted on the charge and ordered to pay $500 or serve 386 days in jail in the case State of Alabama v. Martin Luther King Jr. However, this only drew more attention to Martin Luther King Jr. and the boycott that he was successfully leading. Martin Luther King Jr.'s conviction in the solo boycott, and on June 5, 1956, 
The Federal District Court ruled in Browder v. Gale that bus segregation was unconstitutional. And in November 1956, the U.S. Supreme Court affirmed Browder v. Gale and struck down laws requiring segregated seating on public buses. The court's decision came the same day that King and the Montgomery Improvement Association were in circuit court challenging an injunction against the MIA carpools. Resolved not to end the boycott until the order of the, to desegregate the buses actually arrived in Montgomery, the MIA operated without the carpool system for a month. As the Supreme Court upheld the lower, lower court's ruling, and on the 20th of December, 1956, King called for the end of the boycott. The community agreed. The Montgomery bus boycott allowed Martin Luther King Jr. to really take a stand and show the world what he had. By leading one of the first successful parts of the Civil Rights Movement, King illustrated his brilliant leadership. This allowed him to go on and take bigger and bigger roles in the Civil Rights Movement, eventually leading him to becoming the leader of the whole thing. Without the Montgomery bus boycott, King would have never gotten the attention necessary to really get himself in a position of power and therefore, the whole civil rights movement would have been deprived of the leader that it needed. Martin Luther King truly led this boycott to incredible success. While Rosa Parks' story is famously known, what really makes the story remarkable is the success that the Montgomery bus boycott achieved. After the NAACP heard of Mrs. Parks' moment of confidence, the organization decided to take action immediately. They had the Montgomery Improvement Association formed, and after electing Martin Luther King as a leader in the movement, flyers were printed and posted in African American neighborhoods. They even had ads printed in local newspapers telling people to not ride city buses starting December 5, 1955, the day of Rosa's trial. Alternative ways of transportation were encouraged, such as walking, carpooling, or just to stay home from work or school. One of the most efficient ways of communication was Martin Luther King's church, which served as a platform for the movement at the time. The effort had obvious success as 40,000 black passengers opted to not ride city buses. On December 5th, Rosa was found guilty of breaking Montgomery City Code. She was fined $10 plus a $4 court fee. Yet the movement in no way stopped there. Are you bitter over it? No, I'm not. Why? Not at this time. Well, in fact, during the our, uh, protest in Montgomery, we did have some white people who joined with you. Joined with us, and they suffered a great deal. And I felt that it was, in fact, Dr. Martin Luther King used to say himself that it was not a black and white issue, but it was right and wrong. Right, absolutely. So you didn't hold it against collectively all white people. That's true. I did not. What then did you do with your anger? I tried to use my anger. Uh, I tried to have as little anger as possible. But I tried to use it to tr help people who were suffering and many who were discouraged and did not have the courage to try to take a stand for themselves. For a little over a year, 381 days to be exact, uh, Montgomery City buses were crippled by the absence of black passengers. At times, buses sat unoccupied and the economy of the city was suffering greatly. Once white citizens realized that the movement was prepared to continue the protest for as long as it took, they responded with violence. Indigenous burned black churches. Worse yet, Martin Luther King and Nixon's houses were burned down and destroyed by bombings. While both of these violent acts were traumatic, they gave the movement validity. Since the white community's response acknowledged the movement as a threat, the black community used their anger as motivation for the protest. Finally, the African American community decided to appeal the segregation of buses. The city government was stuck in a bad situation because while they wanted to side with the white segregationists, the economy was unable to thrive while the boycott continued. The financial loss from the city buses meant that the city of Montgomery had no choice but to lift segregation from city buses. The boycott officially ended on December 20th, 1956. This movement is now known as, as Rosa Parks put it, one of the largest and most successful mass movements against racial segregation in history. This is because the black community was able to communicate the injustice of the city code in a nonviolent way. The community was patient and went out of their way to make the movement last. 
It says much about the dedication of the movement that white segregationists felt it necessary to intervene. This movement set the precedent for future successful movements against racial inequality. But success, of course, cannot come without support. There were several protests, boycotts, and marches throughout the civil rights movement. No other movements had such a huge reaction from the nation as a whole, gathering supporters from all over. All these supporters came as a result of the national coverage of the Montgomery bus boycott and Martin Luther King Jr.'s trial. For example, in early 1956, veteran pacifists Bayard Rustin and Glenn E. Smiley visited Montgomery and offered Mr. King advice on the application of Gandhian techniques and nonviolence in reference to American race relations. This had a long-lasting effect on Mr. King, and from then on he'd try to follow Gandhi's principles of nonviolence. Other followers of Gandhian ideas, such as Richard Gregg, William Stuart Nelson, and Homer Jack, wrote the MIA offering their support, but followers of Gandhi weren't the only supporters. Mr. Rustin, Ella Baker, and Stanley Levison founded In Friendship to raise funds in the North for Southern civil rights efforts, including the Montgomery bus boycott. As referenced earlier, a bunch of different groups from within Montgomery came together to support the boycott. For instance, the taxi drivers giving rides to participants, or maybe Dexter Avenue Baptist Church where the boycott was organized. Perhaps the biggest, most important supporter, the Montgomery Improvement Association that led and organized the whole protest. Finally, another very important group of people that were important to the boycott, but not really well known, would be Robert Hughes, along with others for, from the Alabama Council for Human Relations. They were responsible for organizing meetings between the Montgomery Improvement Association and city officials. Even though no agreements were able to be reached, this did help the boycott get coverage. Many things came together and happened throughout the Montgomery bus boycott. As a direct result of Rosa Parks' decision to stand up for herself, society was forever changed. The Montgomery bus boycott was one of the first major events of the civil rights movement, and it provided the movement with a much-needed leader. It was an incredible success, and it accompanied what it set out to do, and it got people from all over the nation to get behind the civil rights movement. The boycott illustrated how one small action can have a huge reaction, like a ripple becoming a wave. It truly was a historic event and something every citizen of these United States should know about. Do you feel, Rosa, that this movement has been a success? It has uh, made, we have made uh, many improvements from way back there when we had legally enforced racial segregation. But we still have many challenges to face and we have many uh, problems to Song. You have faith? Yes, I still have faith that, that it is possible.